In order to work with natural logarithms, I'd like to first show you about the irrational number e. So this is going to be something like pi. You know, so it's going to be something that we can't write as a fraction. So it's called an irrational number. It turns out natural logarithms are going to be related to this e. Now when I learned about this, um, I didn't really know what this meant. But it turns out there are some examples in nature or in sort of regular life when e actually shows up. So I would like to show you one example. So here we're going to use uh, investment as an example. So let's say that you invest p dollars. It doesn't matter what this is. This is your principal, you know, the initial amount of dollars that you invest. And it's at a fixed rate. So let's say that means that you're earning interest of 10% per annum, in other words, per year, for 10 years. This is the key thing that's not going to change in this example here. Now we're going to take a look at how many interest payments are made each year. So if one interest payment is made each year, we're going to sort of, we're going to take a look at this right here. This is going to be the key here. If we make one interest payment each year, how much will we have after the 10 years? Well, what we can do, we can use this equation, which we looked at before. This is sort of how much is remaining at the end of 10 years or at the end of however many years you want. It's going to be u of n plus 1 equals u1 times r to the power of n. We're sort of going to use this equation here. So here's what we're going to be using. But in order to use it, what we'll have to do then is, well, define a few things. So if you remember carefully, um, r, that's your rate. That's your interest rate. But it's important that you know that it's per compound period. Okay, this is the thing here. It's the rate per period. And we're going to write that as a decimal. That's normally how it's done. Now we have n. That's going to be the number of periods. I think that's all we need. U1 is just going to be the initial amount. So in that case, then we're going to say then that the initial amount, well, that's just going to be equal to p in this case. So if we make one interest uh, payment per year, in other words, if we're, if we're calculating the interest or if we're sort of paying it off, if the bank is giving you these payments once per year, let's take a look at what happens here. Now we can actually calculate the rate then. The rate is going to be, well, remember, you invest this much money, so that means we're going to... Um, we're going to be given that amount plus 10% of that amount. So you could say it's like saying 100% plus 10%. Uh, what I'd like to do is make it in decimal. So 100% is just 1, and 10%, 10% is just equal to 0 0.1, if we write that as a decimal here. Uh, maybe that's not very clear here. Let me just put a little arrow here, maybe. So that equals 0 0.1. So it's going to be the interest rate per period. So in this case, it's being done once per year, so we divide it by 1. That means my rate then is just 1 plus 0.1, so it's just 1.1. I'm going to need this. And that way, then, I can calculate it. So after 10 years, what's going to happen? Well, I have u11. I showed you in another video why we have u11 instead. It's just a notation, so don't worry too much. This still means after 10 years. It's going to be the initial amount you invested, which is p. It's going to be that times your rate, which is 1.1. All of that will be to the power of n, which is the number of periods. Now in this case right here, I have 1 per year times 10 years. So that means I'm going to have 1 times 10, so that's just 10 periods here. And because of that, then I can actually calculate this on my calculator. So let me get it out here. There we go. And I'm going to say, well, what's 1.1? to the power of 10. And that gives me this, 2.5937, uh, 42, keep going, keep going. Now I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna be a little bit sloppy as far as the uh, significant figures here, because I just wanna show you something that's happening here. So the answer then, that you're going to have after 10 years, is gonna be P times, I'm gonna put this in different colors right here. So P times, in this case, it was 2.59, and then it went, uh, what was it, 3742, yeah, three, dot, dot, dot. So 593742 keeps going. So this is this number right here. This is the sort of, this is the important thing right here. This is how much you have. 
after 10 years if you only make one interest payment. Now what I'd like to do though is let's do this over and over again but we're going to have more payments per year. In other words, we're going to have more times that we're compounding it or you could say we're going to we're going to recalculate the interest more times per year than just once. So let's take a look then. Same situation, but this time we have 10 interest payments per year. Well, if we have 10, we have to just recalculate the rate. The rate will be, of course, 100% plus this 10% uh, interest rate per year, except this time we're going to divide it by the number of um, payments that are made per year. So in this case right here, if we're doing it 10 per year, then we divide it by 10. So that means then that R will be one point, in this case right here, this right here is 1.01. .01. That's what this one right here will be. Okay, that's if we take um, 0 0.1 and we divide it by 10. All right, again, and if you're not sure, you can always do it on your calculator just in case, 0 0.1 divided by 10, and we get 0 0.01. Okay, so what that tells us then is we have R is 0 0.01. That's important. But also what's important is knowing what n is. So n in this case right here, remember we learned that n should be the number of periods. Now it's always over 10 years. But in this case we're making 10 payments per year times 10 years. So in other words, n will be 100. And because of that then, now we can calculate. So u of, in this case right here, it'll be... Um, u11 still, it'll be p times, remember we're still using this equation here, u of 11, in other words, the amount of money you have after 10 years is going to be called u11. That's because it's at the start of the 11th year, that's what happens after 10 years. I mean, this may look confusing, but don't worry too much about the u11. The key thing is, we're saying equals u1, which is the initial amount, times the rate to the power of n. In this case right here, it's going to be times the rate, which is 1.01, .01, all that to the power of 100. Let's see what we get then. So here then I'm going to calculate 1.01, .01, all that to the power of 100. If I do that, I end up with this number right here. So 2.7048, da, 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 it keeps going. So 2.7048. So I'm going to say equals P times 2.7048, and it keeps going. Just that's the, that's the answer. And if I look over here, what if we instead have 100 interest rates, per, uh, interest payments per year? In this case here, then your rate, well, it'll be R plus 0 0.1. That's still your interest percent here. That's your interest rate. This time we divide it by how many uh, we make per year, so in this case 100. Well, that gives us R equals 1 point, in this case right here it's going to be 0, 0, 001. That's what 0 0.1 divided by 100 is. And if we do that then, well what we can do, we can take a look at that then. We can take a look at what sort of, what to do. So in this case right here, um, well we need to know what N is as well. So that was R. We need to know what N is n is still 10 years, this time it's times 100. So in that case, this is, uh, well, that'll be 10,000 then, right? Because this is, uh, nope, sorry, that's 1,000. That's my mistake. That should be one less zero here. There we go. Because we have 100 times 10, we have one, two, three zeros. There we go. And that means then that u11, the amount of money you have after 10 years will be equal to P then times 1.001 .001 to the power of 1,000. Let's calculate that. You might think this is really stupid, but I am going somewhere with this. And so 1.001 .001 to the power of 1,000. If I do that, I get an answer of 2.7169, so 2.7169 with some other stuff there. So equals P times, oops, it was 2.7169. And it keeps going. Keep in mind the key was, that was if you had 100, you get this. If you had 10, you get this. If you go back here, if you had one, then you get this. I just want you to see sort of the relation between this. And finally, what if we make a million interest rate, uh, interest payments per year? 
again, we have the same situation. The rate is going to be 100% of what you initially put in, plus you have the interest rate divided by how many payments per year. So in this case, a million. Well, that's going to be 1.12345 1, and then a 1 here. Okay, so I have six zeros there. That's going to be my R value. And then my N, well, that'll be 10 years times a million. So that gives me 10 million. Right, that's going to be 10 million. And in this case, you hear this here will be sort of, yeah, 1.000001. Therefore, U11, the amount of money you have after 10 years, will be equal to um, the initial amount, which is P, all that times your rate, which is 1.12345 1, with a 1, to the power of 10 million. All right, so this is the extreme example. Don't worry, this is the last one. There is a method to my badness here. There's a reason why I'm doing this. So if we do this, uh, then we have, well, let's do it here. So 1.000000 000 1. Do I have six zeros? Yes. All that to the power of, and this time I need seven zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I get this answer this time, 2.71828, delete, delete. All right, so that equals P times 2.71828, so it keeps going. So the key was then, look, look what happens here. As I make more interest rate, uh, more interest payments, so if there's only one per year, I get P times this number. And as I increase the number of payments per year, so as I increase it to, let's say, 10 of them per year, I get this number. And 100 of them, I get this number. And if I go a million of them, I get this number. In fact, if I go sort of infinity, this is the idea. As I go, let's say, to, I don't know, quadrillions of them, I'm going to get closer and closer to a number very similar to this. So this is sort of the, the key here. It approaches, this is the thing here. So it approaches this number, 2.71828, that keeps going like this. And that is actually what we write as this letter E. That is actually what this is denoting here. So it's approximately 2.71828. But now why don't I say what it is exactly? Well, that's because it's a non-repeating number, first of all. In fact, it's irrational. And what irrational means? It means you can't write as a fraction. So there's not that many numbers that are irrational, but there are some. E is one of them. In fact, um, so is pi. So just so you know, pi is another example of a number like E. It's a number that, although we say pi is 3.14, it's not. It's not exactly that. In fact, it goes on forever. The number goes on forever, never repeats, just like E does. So E actually just keeps on going forever, never repeats. And in fact, you can't write it as a uh, fraction. That's what a rational number means. So this is really important here, I think. Normally we say E to the power of 1. That's what this is, because we can have e to the power of whatever you want. We can even see it on a calculator if I do that. I can ask my calculator, notice over here we have the button for pi. So if I press pi here, that's a little blue one, I press enter, it gives me 3.14159265 but it actually keeps going forever. Just like, look at this one, that's e, this little blue one right there. So just like e, that gives me this number. So this is what's really important, is that this number E, for example, comes out, it's not just some made-up weirdo thing, it actually comes up in everyday life if you're investing money, for example, and it comes up a lot of things, for example, in physics. Um, and I know that there's some examples in biology as well where it comes in. So just to sort of motivate you for why it is that we can actually use the irrational number E, it really comes up, for example, in investment. In the next videos, we're going to look at natural logarithms and how they're related to E and how we can work with those.